Disclaimer, some words, descriptions, and terminologies may be incorrect. You really cannot get anything for free. Void where prohibited. Now that we got that over with, let's move on. So, like I say in the description, you can get a free 24 by 36 size poster. Well, of course, nothing's for free for real, and there are some tricks to this. What I figured is all these free 4x6 prints you can get from like Shutterfly. Shutterfly, if you have uh, their mobile app, has unlimited free prints. But Shutterfly definitely will get you in shipping. Shipping costs are outrageous. Here's a, another free print from York. A hundred free prints. I've never used them, so I don't know how much they charge for shipping on their items. And uh, if you keep looking around on the internet, there's you can find free prints everywhere. Here are 20 free prints and free standard shipping on those 20 free prints. But... For this poster, I believe it's 36 prints that we're going to need, so you're probably going to need a friend to print the other half for you. So anyways, for this demonstration, I will show you how to do it using Shutterfly. First, you need to get your picture. A high definition, large, not cropped not reformatted just raw picture and Photoshop I'm using Photoshop I think it's CS6 for this or CS5 about any Photoshop will do and uh, now we're gonna need to set up a new page because we're gonna copy and paste this in here so you select new and on the uh, first side is I think is going to be the width which would be 36 so you set that value to 36 or is that the height well the height was going to be 24 so you set that value at 24 and uh, we're also going to change the pixels on this 72 is just not going to do it. We want more detail. So we will bump that up to uh, 720 or so like that. Once we get all those values set properly, we will open up the paper that we will work. So we will press OK and here's the new sheet and it's right next to the image that we want to use nice clean ready the size we want the pixels we want squared up so it will fit in your screen as big as it can be and then go back over to the picture on this picture we want to select it so we'll press that select button on the upper left there and put the dotted border around it and we'll select Control X or Command X. We want to cut it. Today we will be cutting, not copying. So you cut it and uh, it disappears from the screen. This way you know exactly everything that you cut out because it's left with a white area instead of copying it and you're not really sure. Maybe you slipped on the mouse and you only copied half of it. Then go back to your new page and paste it in there now as you can see it's not fitting the whole page this is where we have to click up one tool higher and I think that's the navigation tool or whatever it is you select that and we get the grips so we can grab the corners and stretch it to fill our sheet our poster size to get it all in the poster and covering all the poster so you want to grab that grip but you also want to 
have the shift key held down. The shift key, if you don't hold it down, the aspect ratio, the size, is going to be uneven. Then you'll get a short, stubby car or whatever. So you want to hold the shift key down, grab that corner, and drag it to make it bigger. Then it will all scale up properly. As you see here, it's scaling properly. And we just want to fit it onto that page. So you want to, what I do is I drag it up to the upper left corner and it will snap to that corner and then I will drag it down. So when, once it snaps up to that corner, then you know you've got the upper left done and you can drag it down to the lower right. Make sure you're holding that shift key and make sure you release the click. So if you hit the mouse click, hold the mouse and drag it, release it, then release the shift key, not the shift key first. As you can see in my photo, it's not going to fit and be able to crop right because if we fit it, you would lose a front and rear bumper on the car so we are just going to set it so you go back down and you s pick the selection tool and it asks you if that's where you want to place it if everything's good look around make sure it's all good and then press the OK button and it will place it right there where you want it to be now if you've got a slow computer like me once you click OK it'll place it there and have to render regenerate the picture to its full value full quality once it's done doing that then we can move on to the next step it'll take a little bit to do that and as you can see I've got a white border on the top of the bottom because I couldn't scale this picture in properly to fit the whole poster so I'm going to select that the background and change the color on the background. Uh, I'm going to change that to black. So the background will be black instead of white, what it normally was. If you know this is going to happen before, you can change it before, but yeah, you can do it now. All right. So once we've got that color set, we want to uh, check to make sure that the canvas size is proper. So I think it's image canvas size and you can see you can switch the values over two inches to make sure you've got a 24 by 36 or 36 by 24 then save it. Make sure you save it to a project name. I would recommend also putting it in its own folder because there's going to be a lot more saving of different panels and different cuts, different pictures per se, of it. So get a good name for it. And uh, because you're saving this in the PSD, the Photoshop is going to ask you if you want to save it on this. Remember this little dialog box and that you have to select OK because this is going to tell you that you're saving it in Photoshop. And once you got it saved in the Photoshop format uh, select that selecting tool or whatever it is and choose up top in the top menu there that you not want normal but you want a specific or certain size in there and then once you do we want the width to be 36 there in the blue highlighted window up top there we added in 36 but you got to put in in for inches not pixels you want 36 inches and then we'll move on to the next one over and uh, we want four inches because we're cutting it at four inches tall and make sure you add that i i n in there because it's inches and once we got that set and it's set to cut and not normal every time you click in to your work area it'll select that size box for you and you can't change it so you know you've got that size box so we'll start cutting at the top 
Now we got to make sure that you are up to the very top. You're not above the top, below the top, that you're cutting right on the top line. This first cut has got to be perfect so all the rest of your cuts will be perfect. If you don't do it right, it's not going to be perfect. So we want to make sure that it's right up top there. And we just, you got to even zoom in, look really close. If you clicked in the gray area the first time, instead of the black up top there, it would forcefully set it to exact. But you want to make sure this is exact, so when you cut it, it will cut it just fine. So it's going to take a while because it's the whole picture that it's got to re-render, and it'll make the cut. And when it's done cutting, it's cut away. And from there, you look at the area that you cut out to make sure there's no photo on the left, or no photo pieces on the right, or no piece on the top that you get a perfect cut. Once you've reviewed, uh, you can even zoom in, zoom out on the corners to make sure you get a perfect cut. We're going to uh, go to File, New, and we're going to open up a new page. You don't have to set the values for this because the values are set to what you have cut. And of course, you're going to paste in what you cut so the values are perfect. So all you have to do on this is select okay really if you look there the values are going to be perfect and then your cut it shows here in pixels and not inches or is it inches and not pixels but it's the perfect size so just select okay and it will open up a new page and from here it's the exact size so all you have to do is command or control V to paste it in there pretty simple but you want to just paste it in there drop it in there and once you got it in there you don't want to scale it change it move it shift it or anything it should fall perfectly into place all you want to do is save it so save as and uh, the window will come up on this you can still save it as a Photoshop item but make a name for it I called it like cut one or because I'm doing multiple projects wall cut one because it's the wall photo and then I save it and because it's being saved as a Photoshop it's gonna pop up this dialog box again Remember this dialog box because this dialog box is telling you basically by the symbol that hey you're saving this as a Photoshop item. So later on when we save as something else if that comes up you did it wrong. So now that we've got our cut saved we can go back to our working picture and of course you don't need to select a selector tool on the left again it should be there but this time you uh, click into the photo and that same size box comes up that you had before but you have to align this perfectly can't be above or below the picture it's got to be a perfect cut of the picture so to get this perfect cut you can't I, I don't know of any way to get it to snap into place you've got to move it around you've got to adjust it you don't want to slide it left or right just up and down make sure you got your left and right straight so you really wanna you wanna zoom in on this to make sure that your line your cut line your top cut line is right on the top now here you're zoomed in a bit and you can line it up a little bit better and you can see how much movement there is how many spaces in between the movement but you want to be exact for this so it'll come out perfect so you've got to zoom in more you got to zoom in to the pixel level you can see that there's little blocks in there those are the pixels per se of it 
so you want to be able to zoom in that far and you want to take your cut line and make sure it is perfect not a above the color into the white area not into the color area right smack dead in the middle there and pay attention to every step for instance like here I'm saving it and uh, I'm moving along you know I'm cutting the picture down I'm down to my last cut and I'm ready to move on to my next step it's getting kind of boring and then I get this window here now like I told you what this dialog box represents so what it represents is that you're saving it as Photoshop remember that because the next step is gonna be different so now you've cut it all and you're down to a blank slate and uh, for instance look around make sure there's no leftover pieces I believe on the right lower right there was a little piece left as you can see the uh, selection box is not perfect there it was over to the right a little bit so that made that cut wrong so we've got to adjust it and recut that one so we recut it and we're going to name it the same one as the wrong cut and it's going to ask us if we want to replace it and hell yeah we want to replace it because that cut was wrong it was a little off it was going to make everything a little off so once uh, that comes up just select replace and replace it but you got to make sure that all these cuts are perfect zoom in zoom out make sure that they're all perfect every step once you get a rhythm you can get going but make sure make sure you see this dialogue box come up make sure your steps are all perfect and then once you got it clean cut you can move on to the next thing I've messed up quite a few times and after doing it right clean slate clean paper you've cut everything off that needs to be cut off and you're good and uh, you've got six cuts out of this you cut it the long way six times and you'll have your cuts make sure that you see you've got cut one two three four five six even if they put them not in order make sure they're all cut make sure your original and your slices look good so you've got it straight once that's all done you're set so now you can open up your cuts I'm using a different picture to show you this other cut style so you don't get so bored now you want to even though this is a small cut you want to fill up the whole page so you have no distraction so you're not looking at other folders you got and other work you got to do later on make it a full page like this nice and wide so you can see both the left and the right side on this we're going to have to change the cut size so you gotta go up to the top there and change the what is it 36 to 6 so just take the 3 out and so it's a 4 by 6 cut in there so leave it as what is that uh, cut to dimensions or whatever make sure you got four make sure you've got six in there so once you click in there it gives you that right cut in this when you're starting with like I'll naturally start from the left and go to the right you can click on the or left click on the left on the gray to the left side of the photo and it will snap in there and get you your first alignment perfect but of course you want to zoom in just to make sure that 
you're not off. Make sure you're not leaving a piece hanging out like we can see here. Because that's going to mess it up again. Then you're going to have to step back and step back and step back until you get it right. So make sure that's lined up. You want to zoom down to pixel level. So you're exact. You're not in one pixel. Excuse me. Or out one pixel. You want to be right in there. Then you cut it. Then you check your area. Zoom out from there. You've got a clean cut. But you can't see if you've left any pieces hanging over. So you want to want to pull out, zoom out, and check your area to make sure that you cut. We've zoomed out, and there's no pieces left on the top, no pieces left on the bottom, no pieces left on the left. It's a good clean cut. So from there, what do you do? You save it. But this time, we're s well. The aspect ratio is right. You open up the new page. So it's simple. I think it's controller command N is new. So you can have your fingers do the walking instead of drop down menus. You select new. You get the right size. The right size window is opened. And you can do the simple control V. Paste it into that box. And once it's paste it into that box don't move it around or anything like that just bamo paste it in there then you've got it in there as you can see it's perfect it fits it's not hanging over the left not hanging over the right not up down it's perfect now it's time to go save it but we don't want to save it as a Photoshop PSD we want to save it as a JPEG because this is what's going to Shutterfly. And we want to title it because this is going to be also the name of the photo. Most likely the name that they're going to put on the back of the photo so you know what puzzle pieces go where. So I start with one. So this is like Desert 1, D1, D2, D3, move on from there and then I name it get the name right make sure you're in JPEG and make sure it's saved right then you'll see this dial dialog box which is different from if you were saving it as a Photoshop PSD and this is all pretty accurate then you go ahead and click OK on that and move on to the next step which will be uh, once it's saved you close this window and you go back and make your next cut and you don't have to save this as a Photoshop thing file as a PSD just don't save because you can go back and make the cuts later if it's inaccurate on one the other one's going to be inaccurate so then you open it back up and you click to select your next window and you have got to make sure that you are on target correctly make sure everything is perfect you are in there so you got to start zooming in So when you get your rhythm going, you get everything perfect, you start just cutting this stuff down. And then you'll have a whole strip knocked out, just got your last one done, move on to the next one. The shadows and the different colors are good on this one, but so once you get it all done, You've got all those blocks saved. Uh, next, uh, you know, go through and make sure you've got 1 to 26. And they all look the same. 
review it all make sure that it is perfect then off to Shutterfly make sure to log on to your account and make sure you've got your free free photos and any other deals like this pack of three freebies uh, make sure you got pictures for those too because you want to get as much free stuff as you can get even though they're gonna stab you for shipping oh my gosh shipping prices are outrageous and then go ahead and upload your photos uh, so you select the photos that you want probably through your browser and it takes forever for them to upload so you go take a break get a sandwich something to drink find out who that was at the door check your email well you don't want to do too much checking the email because that's upload speed and once they're all there uh, you select them all so make sure you get a check mark on every one and look at it again this is a different shot this is the neighbor's Mustang in a detailing shop uh, this is a two panel picture a higher and a lower so then you select the quantities you want and if you want it glossy or matte if you use the cheap poster frames that have the plexiglass in front of it mm, I don't know I don't know if glossy or matte make much of a difference I'd try matte because I can kind of see the panels reflecting back even though there should be flat behind the placey glass well anyways make sure that you work all the deals that you can get out of this and use the mini photos for whatever you want I'm making business cards here uh, see I've got this excellent deal where I got all those free they're even hooking me up on free expedient shipping look how much I had to pay that's right nothing that's a deal good and all those other times I paid for shipping so once you get them all uh, get a workspace that you can lay them out and some masking tape and remember they were numbered on the back as you titled them so that'll help lay them out but you throw like one cut one line down and you line them up and make sure that they are perfect then you flip them back over in their proper order you want them flip back over with your masking tape and line them up side by side upside down and put the masking tape on the white back side and tape them together so they're perfectly lined up down left right just perfect and you rebuild these strips just the opposite of how you cut them but you make sure that they're tight and we're just going to use scotch tape for this part right now so get them straight flip them over stick them together with masking tape to make sure that they're not shifted off center or anything that they're perfect they're four by six they're gonna match perfectly their papers are cut perfect so line it up just keep knocking out these strips lining them up perfectly just the opposite of Photoshop then flip them over and tape them strips together and then you've got the whole thing taped together tight and perfect with scotch tape so it's pretty good and it's decent together but that scotch tapes not gonna hold that scotch tapes not gonna have them tight so this with your counter you want to spray your counter down with water and spray the back side of the photos with water remember back in the day photos were chemically developed and these are too so the papers pretty waterproof even the matte paper is waterproof so you spray the white side down well you spray the color side down and with the counter wet and the color side of the prints wet they stick flush to the counter perfect tight come through with a little paper towel on top don't catch the corners gently dry any water away 
then you get your good quality clear packing tape and you start taping the strips together real tight right to the edges start doing it horizontally knock the horizontal out uh, and then come through at vertical and get all the vertical sides done and then you got to do the edges so they don't curl on the edges so we want to stretch out pieces as long as it is and as wide as it is and line them up perfectly on the edge there so those edges don't curl due to humidity moisture spills or anything like that and then you go and take down your least favorite poster some crappy tires from Toyo Tire some chick that signed a poster for you a long time ago at a SEMA show and you bring that up because you're gonna put this beautiful new poster of your custom car in its place so you take the little plastic trims off the side and you take this poster out roll it up throw it away it's no use it's been sun faded and it's been there forever you've got it memorized probably the times that you've seen it so get rid of that put your new free 24 by 36 poster in there and hang it up on your wall so those are some things you can do with shutterfly stuff and if you're a real car nut you can order a bunch of different things on shutterfly uh, 